Hi again, everybody. The 2013 high school football season is underway. The Lions are at home this week against uh, Lancaster in the uh, Trinity Mother Francis kickoff classic on Saturday night, September 7th. It's a three-day event, Thursday night, White House and Chapel Hill, Friday night, Robert E. Lee and Lufkin, and then JT coming up on Saturday night. Now, Coach Rickland Holmes joins us. The Lions opened their season this past Friday night in Lufkin. Uh, tough ball game. They lose to Lufkin 52-28, but Coach, that was just a wild ball game. You guys started out, took a lead, and then there were a lot of mistakes. Just a lot of opening night stuff going on too. Oh, most right. definitely, most definitely. But what I am proud about the kids is they done what I've been teaching them to do, coaching them to do, which is start out fast. Mm -hmm. Now we just have to make sure that we end the same way that we start. Uh, we can't make little mistakes because little mistakes, great teams, good teams are going to take advantage of that and they're going to capitalize. And that's what Lufkin did against us Friday night. You know, you look back at the numbers, you only had one turnover in the game. That was an interception. But when you talk about mistakes, there were, I think, 20 plays of minus yardage and what, 15 quarterback sacks. I yes. heard those two numbers thrown around. What yes. happened? And a lot of those, uh, a lot of those <laughs> uh, quarterback sacks came from Geo just not staying in the pocket. Uh, he thought that the uh, protection had broken down and it hadn't, and that's what caused probably about 70 percent of those sacks. Uh, I think for overall, offensive line done a great job blocking Friday night for Geo and the running backs. Uh, as you can see with the passing completions that we did have, we put up a lot of good numbers. Mm, yeah. But uh, at the same time, you know, with bad snaps, uh, fumbles, stuff of that nature, things happen. They capitalize on it, puts us in a bad situation. And, uh, you know, they practice the win just like we do. <laughs> and I know you feel like all those mistakes are very correctable. They are very correctable. Uh, and the good thing about it, they're not the same mistakes that we made against Luff I mean, against Longview in the scrimmage. You know, so now that we've harped on those mistakes that we made against mm -hmm. Lufkin, we won't make them again against Lancaster. And hopefully there are no new mistakes that come up and we can <laughs> just keep rolling through the season. But, uh, you know, that's what football is about. Football is about playing each game and playing them hard. Now you uh, roll out a new quarterback, uh, Geo McAllister, who's bigger than any of the guys that you've had recently. Mm -hmm. had a chance to meet him this week. Excellent young man. Very good guy to talk to and very talented. How did he play? I think Gio played real good. Uh, he, he made some, some uh, first-year varsity mistakes, right. but they were very correctable, and some of them was expected from him. Uh, I think overall he managed the team well. Uh, he understood exactly what he needed to do back there at the quarterback, whether it was making the right reads, making the right adjustment, the throws that he needed to make. I think he made some good decisions on that. It's just a couple of little things we got to work on and the main thing is just him being patient back there. And, and talking to him this week, he knows, I think he knows what he, with the, the mistakes he made, mm -hmm. and which is a quarterback really is kind of in an, in an interesting role, almost like a coach. You have to be really honest with yourself, don't you? I mean, if you, you, you really can't kid yourself. You have to know exactly what you did right and did wrong and, and not sugarcoat any of that. Is that a fair statement? Oh, that is a very fair statement. You have to do what we call a self-check with yourself. <laughs> And you got to understand that, you know, there are things that you're going to have to do and there are things that you're going to have to do that you don't want to do. But at the same time, it has to be done. And uh, he understands that. He know what happened. He knew what needs to be corrected. And uh, for the next, for this week of practice, he's been doing a great job correcting me. Who, uh, let us talk about some of the guys who played well. What, first of all, what did you do that you liked Friday night? Oh, one thing I done, I liked that, uh, the defense. You know, uh, they were very fundamentally sound. We just had way too many missed tackles. Uh, we had guys in the right place uh, doing what they needed to do. We just didn't finish on everything that we done. And when I say finish, I'm talking about tackling, making sure we get the guys down and start over. Uh, that first three series was three and out. You know, that's what we've been coaching them to do. That's what Coach Anderson put together for us to do. Uh, and then on the offensive side of the ball, we found out we got a lot of weapons mm -hmm. to replace the weapons that we just lost. <laughs> and, uh, you know, those guys pretty much can score when they want to score. We just got to make sure we get perfect snaps, and we got to make sure that we make right reads, and Gio just has to be patient back there to get the ball to the playmaker. Now, obviously, we'll see some of those standouts in a moment, but let's single out a few kids who you really, really thought jumped out Friday night and played well. On the offense side of the ball, you got to start with Reggie Gibson. You know, he's an explosive running back and wide receiver. Uh, another guy that showed up that, you know, I've been waiting on to come out of his shell is Jeremy Wilson. You know, uh, he showed that he has phenomenal speed and he has the wiggle room to make people miss in yep. the open field. Uh, consistent play out of Geo. You know, uh, he done a lot of great things for us that Friday night, but uh, it's a lot more that he can do better. 
and he understands that. So on the offensive side of the ball, those guys are the ones that stood out to me the most. Uh, and the offensive line, you know, as an overall, I think they protected better this year than they did last year. I think really? they bought a lot of time for Gio to make the, a lot of the balls that he did throw and a lot of balls he should have thrown. Uh, and then on the defense side of the ball, um, you know, consistent play out of a guy that, you know, played a little bit last year. Uh, but he's a he's a phenomenal player right now this year, and that's uh, Jalen Reese. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a junior linebacker, and uh, I think he just had an outstanding game. How many tackles did he wind up with? Uh, I don't know. He had double digits in tackles. I know okay. that for sure. Right. But uh, it wasn't all about his tackling. Right. It was about him being where he needed to be, yeah. running to the ball, making things happen for other people to capitalize on it. And some of the time, you know, when he got there, guys should have just made the tackle. You know, it was one missed tackle by Terry Osborne. Uh, in the open field. If it wasn't for Jalen Reese driving at the perfect angle that he did, that guy would have kept outside instead mm -hmm. of cutting back upfield to where the safety was. Uh, and then a strong play out of Ike, uh, Isaac Warren, Ike you know, Warren, at yeah. corner. We expect mm -hmm. a lot from Ike. You know, he's one of those guys kind of like Terry that we kind of lean on because they really do have a lot of varsity experience. And um, for the record, Lufkin's pretty good. <laughs> and they are pretty good. <laughs> They're pretty good. Yeah. Don't, don't get it wrong. You know, uh, they are, they are, they are are not a, uh, they're not a non-talented team, yeah. and they're very well coached by Todd Quick. You know, I think he's done a great job coming in with those kids uh, post the uh, outlaw era, mm -hmm. and uh, I think he's uh, he's got them on the right track. You know, he has the athletes to get it done, uh, and uh, he has the coaching staff that's implementing everything that he needs to implement to those kids and win some football games. All right, before we talk about this week's opponent, uh, Coach uh, Holmes, as always, brings along game video of uh, the uh, Lufkin game uh, at Abe Martin Stadium. So let's roll some of that and take a look at some of the explosiveness that uh, will be the uh, 2013 Lions. We start off here, you're on defense. Oh uh, Yeah, on defense, uh, what we tell those guys up front, you know, like right now, Jalen Reese coming downhill, filling his gap, front line, protecting their gaps, opening up holes for him to run through and make plays and, you know, that's just something that we have to get more consistent at doing. You know, the first three drives, we did that. Here's the end zone view of that. I always like the end zone view. Watch the right, right here side. To the left side. This is the left side. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Jalen Reese. Yeah. You know, that hole opens up. We always talk about cloudy clear. Well, mm -hmm. it was clear, so he filled it up and made it cloudy. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. How does that go again? <laughs> cloudy clear. You know, <laughs> if it's cloudy, don't go. If it's clear, go make it cloudy. <laughs> This right. right here is a swing pass to uh, Reggie Gibson just to show, you know, hey, he knows what to do with the ball in his hand. But uh, it started with the blocking. Uh, Kendall Holmes and uh, Tavares Wilson made some great blocks out here at the edge along with the wide receiver here that sprung him to make this long run. Again, that's just a simple screen pass, right? That's it. You know, as you see them linemen that pulled out to the right side at the top of the screen. Those guys right there shielded it off for him to make that one move and show his speed. All right. Reggie's a senior, and uh, I'm sure he is being recruited. He's, he's a highly recruited guy. Uh, you know, he's getting a lot of attention from a lot of different schools, and this is one reason why he's getting a lot of attention. Yeah. And just smooth. I mean, that's a smooth play. He didn't – he just saw the – Saw the hole. It was blocked well. And yeah. like I say, for the most part, I think the offensive line has – Greatly improved. Here's Gio handing off. This is Jeremy Wilson here. Jeremy Wilson showing his speed, quickness, just letting you know that when guys are where they need to be, making the blocks that they need to make, athletes can do great things with the ball in their hand. Now, uh, he was a sophomore on the varsity last, last year. year. Yes. Yeah. He, got, he's, he saw limited action, but he did get a couple of uh, games where he did get to showcase what he's doing right now. And he got into the secondary so quickly there. Yeah, he's, he's real fast. <laughs> he, he's phenomenally fast. You know, out of him and Reggie. Now you'll see it here. How fast he pops this. Yeah. yeah. Probably one of the fastest guys on our team right now. And he was well blocked, right? Yeah. You know, good block right there yeah. by Reggie outside with the wide receivers. And, you know, it doesn't take knocking guys on the ground, you know, to make a great block. Sometimes you just have to just get in the way. Yeah, that's a real misnomer about playing off. It's some, it doesn't, you're right. Pancaking a guy is not always the answer, is yeah. it? Here's Geo. 
Yeah, just showing that you know he he can he can run with the ball in his hand too. Now he he was a linebacker as a freshman. Is that right? Yeah, he played linebacker <laughs> as a freshman. You know he he plays Brackley at quarterback, but he really came into his own at quarterback his sophomore year. So how did you figure out that he was going to be a quarterback if he's playing linebacker? Just sitting there looking at him throw the ball across the field <laughs> at practice one day. You know. <laughs> seeing that he could actually sling the ball. And he was like, man, what position that guy was like? He's a linebacker. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> I don't want to try him at quarterback. <laughs> and that work, that's worked out pretty well. Here he is again. You're uh, knocking at the door. Another hand off to Reggie. <clears throat> Breaks the plane, right? Yeah, he does. Which was an issue last year in the Lake Lancaster game. game last right? year. Came down <laughs> to a play similar to this, you know. Coming from the five in and getting to the goal line and referees signaling that there was no touchdown, a touchdown with the clock running <laughs> to zero. And they won 26-21. Yes, sir. You own one, don't you? We do. <laughs> we do. Here we go. This, uh, and that's just tough, tough, hard running. I mean, it's one thing, you know, to get free in the open and be able to run, but to be able to run to get run those tough yards. Tight. That just yeah. lets you know his versatility. He, Absolutely. He's not only just a speed back, mm -hmm. but he's able to stick it up in there and get the tough yardage. All right, here's Gio running, showing his mobility. And again, he's a big kid. He's what, 6'3", 6'2", 6'3". And he covers a lot of ground. Yeah. You know, uh, his two strides is maybe everybody's three or four strides. There's the wide angle view of it, picking up positive yardage. Basically a first down run there. And this, this is one of the deals where, you know, I, I point out to Gio that he's going to have to be a little bit patient. The pocket is going to collapse around you. Just because it collapses around you, that just means you step up in it and you still make those, you know, those throws that you need to make. Now, yeah, he's able to be mobile and stuff like that, but at the same time, he has to understand that we still got to do what we need to do. Good movement on the run there. You see, like right here, that was being patient. You know, he stayed in the pocket as long as he could until he felt pressure. You see that? And then yeah. he, he rolled out, and now you see his feet working with his arms. He's Who able to he buy hit? time. Who's the receiver on this? He threw it to Jeremy Wilson. Okay. Like I said, Jeremy had an outstanding game against Lufkin, man. And one thing I've been preaching to him is that he has to be consistent. He can't be one of those guys that make big plays and then the next five plays he doesn't, you know. And he's starting to understand that. He's growing up and he's right now seeing that he's able to do a lot of the stuff that he needs to do to help us win. Were you able to get the ball to the wide outs as much as you wanted to? Right? We really were. Uh, you know, a lot of the time, like I said, it just came from us not staying in there long enough. You know, There's like right there. here, this is one time just, you know, just buying, buying time. You know, Wilson is a wide out. You know, we got the ball in his hand several times. See, I still think of Wilson as a running back from last year. He's yeah. actually a slot yeah, receiver. Yeah, he's actually a slot receiver. Right, yeah. and that's me. I mean, I'm thinking I still see him yeah. as a little tailback last yeah. year, kind of running, mixing in, doing all mm -hmm. sorts of things, yeah. And he still lines up back there every right. once in a while. <clears throat> but, the, but the main back is, is Reggie. This is the pistol for those who are not right here. This is the pistol formation. Yeah, right? running back right behind the quarterback in shotgun formation. Big play here. Big play right here. And this lets let you know that when you go against speed, <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> Your yeah. guys are fast yeah, over there, guys right? Are fast and they guys are fast too. <laughs> so you're not going to outrun everybody. You do have to give that Lufkin kid credit. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's great effort. That is great effort on his, on his behalf. <laughs> but like I say, that, that, comes from, that comes from good coaching. You know, I'm, I'm sure Coach Quick preaches every day to them guys about effort, just like I preach to my guys about effort. You know, it's not about giving 100, 110%. You have to give 100%. Because if you're trying to give 110%, that means you're only really giving 90. Yeah. You know, you can't give more than 100 yeah. at, at any given time. That's one of the oldest cliches yeah. in the book. The oldest cliches that I, I, <laughs> I've, never, I've never banked and hung my hat on. Back on defense. Great play by Ike. Their quarterback, Cumby, again, he has wide receivers going to Texas and one to Texas A&M, yeah. so they're and pretty he had, talented. He has some really talented receivers, you know. 
You know, they do a great job lining those guys up on the inside and, you know, trying to get a mixed match with uh, those outside linebackers. But uh, we game plan and Coach Anderson put, a good, put together a great plan, you know, to limit what they could do. You know, the good thing about playing Lufkin, though, to start the season on the road, they, your guys will not face a more hostile environment anywhere oh, they no. go. No, no <laughs> I mean, they, 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 they've seen about as bad as it's going to get on the road, right? That's right. I mean, that's, that's a right. rabid crowd, and they, you know. And considering we only have three road games. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, and they, they uh, like to beat, they, they like to play, and they really love to get a chance to beat a Tyler team. Oh, most definitely. You know, most yeah. definitely. Anytime you have a chance <laughs> to play against Lufkin and John Tyler. Oh, good, good hit. That's Terry Osborne. Flush him out first. That's the first yeah. thing, right? Now, did he jar the ball loose? Or no. Was that a completion? I, it was a completion. Was he a had completion. all of that. That was a good play by a wide receiver mm -hmm. also, holding on to that play. All right. It's another pass right here to Jeremy Wilson. He did have a great game, didn't he? He did. A very productive day for him. And Jeremy's not a big guy, so he, no. he's cool. He's just small, kind of he's, quick. He's kid, a compact him. kid, though. Mm -hmm. If you see him in person, he's, he's a nice size kid to be the height that he is. Yeah, right. You know? a very muscular kid, and he's really, really fast. You know? uh, I wish he would run track you know, instead of playing baseball, but he's pretty good in baseball. Is he really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You right. know, those two kind of conflict. <laughs> Yeah, the same time of the year, all right? Yes, sir. Geo did not. He 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 didn't wait. Here's a nice completion, by the way. Tell us who that's to. I think that's to uh, might be to Reggie again, but we got a, we got an empty set. Did he have the pocket discipline you were looking for here? Right here is good. Yeah. I think he should have stayed. You know, he stayed there as long as he could, you know, and kept his eyes downfield. Mm -hmm. And he said two guys that came free late made him flush out the pocket. I gotta tell him all he needs to do is stay there, look, keep his eyes downfield, buy as much time as he can. You know, right here the offensive line is doing a pretty good job blocking. I mean, yeah. anytime you block more than three to four seconds, that's pretty good. And then that he, just means now the wide receivers need to get open so we can get that ball right. out of his hand. Used his legs, got got out of the, out of trouble, and got a completion. Different play now. Once again, great protection by the offensive line. You know, hey. He was back there once he made his drop. You know, he went through his reads. He found his receiver. He throws the ball. Yeah. And last year, we, I couldn't quite say that we could do this. You know, it seemed like every time we hiked the ball to Greg, like he was running for his life. Now, who's that? That's Nick Kane, right? On the completion? That's Nick Kane on that completion. Another good wide receiver that I expect a lot from this year. He's I think, a junior and the backup quarterback, yes, too. Isn't yes, sir. I think he's going to have a phenomenal year. Like I said, we got some playmakers, man. You know, you look at Nick, you look at Jeremy, you look at uh, Reggie Wilson. Now you throw in the sophomore, uh, the Antavian Gross. Right. And then we got the big possession receiver, which can actually stretch the field, Rodney Rod Bendy. Rodney Bendy. You know, so. Well, and, and Bendy, again, uh, he caught two, but he's a big, he's a big, big strong, big Fred strong Ross kid. looking type yes. guy, right? Yes. And I, I expect a lot of big things from Bendy this year. Uh, not only because he's big, because he can actually run and he's a real tough kid. Uh, by the way, uh, the first weekend of college football, Chris Hackett, starting safety, TCU. Yeah. You actually saw that TCU-LSU game. Yeah, I actually went to the game. How did Chris play? Chris had a phenomenal game. You know, uh, he made a lot of good good tackles for him. He made a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was always in the right place at the right time. Uh, and he played real physical. And that's one thing that he started doing late in his career, his senior year, yeah. uh, playing back there with Tristan Wade. Uh, he started playing more physical, and he's continuing to do it now at TCU. And uh, I, you know, I expect Chris to do some big things for TCU before he finally leaves and ventures on to the next level. By the way, Tristan Wade is at UT San Antonio, yes. and they won in New Mexico on Saturday. And he's playing phenomenal. You know, Tristan is one of them guys, you know, I, I – I've been coaching for eight years now, and uh, out of eight years, I have 22 that actually played college ball. Right. And out of that, I have, uh, right now, I have four that are playing in the NFL right now. Right. And Hackett and Tristan Wade, the, the next two that I expect yeah. to make it that way. And your guys in the NFL are Jeremy Lane. Jeremy Lane. Has, 
Brian uh, Seattle. Brian McCain. Okay, where's Brian, Brian play? Uh, right now he's with uh, the Oakland Raiders. Okay, he's all with right. the Oakland Raiders. All right. uh, Sam Bradford. Okay. He's at St. Louis. All right. He, you know, he actually played. He actually played safety for us at okay. Putnam City before he actually started playing. That's right. I forgot yeah. about that. Sam Bradford, the quarterback, yeah. went yeah. to Putnam City, yeah. Oklahoma, and you he's coached up, up he's there. He's okay. else, man. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, though him and uh, it's a guy that we had played linebacker for us at Putnam City. Uh, his name is uh, Larry Reese. Okay. Larry Reese. And matter, matter of fact, I used to tease him all the time mm -hmm. because. When I was here at John Tyler, I went to school with a guy that actually went to Lee named Larry Reese. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you got four in the NFL and a bunch of college kids. And then the uh, other one, Fred Ross, uh, saw a pretty extended duty yeah. in Mississippi State's game against your alma mater, uh, yeah. Oklahoma yeah. State, on Saturday yeah. down in Houston, right? And you know, that, that was one of the, the games that I think everybody kind of circled in Stillwater because everybody expected Fred to be in Stillwater. Right. And, uh, you know, at the last minute, because that's what they get paid for. They get paid to recruit. Mm -hmm. uh, he changed his mind. He went to Mississippi State instead of Stillwater. All right, now Lancaster, or Lancaster, depending on the pronunciation, I've heard yeah. it both ways. Yeah, I've heard it several <laughs> ways. You're right. Um, they, uh, they beat you last year, 26-21. Uh, both Farm of burning. you went on to had great seasons. You yeah. got to the state semifinals, and they got to the state finals. They lost. Uh, but just talk about how that game ended last year. Uh, it ended, you know, hey, we put ourselves back in position to win the game. Yeah. Uh, referees are going to be referees. They have to make whatever call that they need to make. Yeah. So you can't blame it on that. You just need to make sure that, uh, you know, hey. It didn't come you, down to that, yeah, right? You yeah. Make sure it don't come down to that. Handle yeah. your business early <laughs> and you don't have to depend on them to try to make that call that you think that they need to make. Uh, I think we learned a lot from that game. Mm -hmm. And as you see, we went on through the rest of the season. Yeah. Uh, to make it to the semifinals, to, uh, and you get, didn't lose again yeah. after that until the state semifinals. Until the state semifinals, right. so uh, you know, uh, I think that was one of them games. It was a significant game for us. It woke us up, mm -hmm. you know. And I think, I think, you don't want to lose early, you know, because you don't want to lose at all. Right. But at the same time, you rather lose them first three, four, five games that are preseason where they really, you know, they count towards your record, but they don't right. count towards you making it to the playoffs. Right. Because there's been several teams over the past years that have lost the first four games and then they win a state championship. We'll go on and do you great. You know, and go on and do great things. And I tell my kids all the time, it's not about right now. Right now is to get you prepared for later. And that's what we taking these first five games going into. These are the games that we want to make sure we got everything tightened up before we hit district. But at the same time, to show that we are learning and we we're improving, you have to win. And that's what we plan on doing. Well, now, they won that game, and uh, they it was a big deal to them at the time, I remember, because it proved to them that they, they could yeah. beat a really good team. Yeah. And we and was number one at it, the time. Right, and they used it yeah. as a springboard, too. It meant exactly. a lot to them, it did. which is a compliment to you. Yeah. It, it yeah. meant so much. It meant so much to them. And, you know, any time you get to knock off number one team at any given time, mm -hmm. yeah. that, that gives you that little boost of self-morale <laughs> that you want within your locker room. And uh, as you've seen, they went on. They went to the state game and uh, lost. A pretty good game against Cedar Park, I believe. Yeah. So. And what do they bring to the table? They've still got their got the quarterback back. Well, no, actually, and a different that, quarterback. Yeah, they have a different quarterback. That guy ended up having to go back to Houston. Okay. Uh, but uh, they have an outstanding receiver named Alexander, and he's a big, tall kid. Big time there. recruit too. He's he a big time recruit. Uh, they have a corner that's pretty good on the defense side of the ball. Uh, up front, they're real fast. They're not as big as uh, they were last year with that big defensive end that they had. But uh, they're very talented and athletic. And uh, uh, you, obviously, you, it, it, you, it's your home opener. You want to win that football. Oh, most definitely. Anytime you play in the uh, Rose, Rose City Classic, you got to go win it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just one of them deals where, you know, uh, it's a home pride thing. Yeah. Let's talk about the Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, the, the announcement of the first class of 12 TISD Athletic Hall of Famers was made on Wednesday, September 4th. There's a bunch of John Tyler kids in there. And just uh, what kind of motivation would this be for you to use, hey, maybe you can be there someday? Same motivation that I use that we have on the wall that set the football off, uh, yeah. you know, with the kids that made the all district and all mm -hmm. state and moved on to college. Now you show their college pictures. You know, hey, one day this could be you, you know, it, with hard work, dedication, and uh, putting forth 100% effort to being the person that you need to be. This is what you can accomplish. And bringing both sides together, yeah. the Lee, the John Tyler, and even the Emmy Scott era. Red. You know, that just lets, you know, not just Tyler know that there are great things going on, not just in Tyler, mm -hmm. but outside of Tyler. And now you let the world know, hey, 
these, these, these young men and women are from Tyler, Texas, but they not only accomplish great things at Tyler, they accomplish great things in the U.S., the world. You know, we have Olympic gold medalists, you know, that played at Emmy Scott. Right. Uh, Robert Taylor. Yeah. You know, this is let you know we can venture out into the world and we can do just as good a thing as we did in Tyler, Texas. Now, there are several former JT football players in that group. Of course, any ho athletic Hall of Fame in Tyler's got to start with Earl Campbell, right? got to start with Earl Campbell. <laughs> you know, he's a Tyler Rose. Uh, you know, he's a, he had an outstanding career in high school. Right. had an outstanding career in college. Won the Heisman Trophy, was All-American several years. Yeah. Uh, then he goes on to the pros and... And then he makes it to the Hall of Fame yeah, in the right. pros. And so <laughs> if you make it to the he Hall is, of Fame in the pros, he is Tyler. Yeah, you got to make it to the Hall of Fame <laughs> in your city. You know, so uh, it, it, it worked out well, you know, leading off the list with him. Yeah. And then you go down and you talk about the Aaron Rosses, uh, yeah. the Robert Taylors that came from Emmy Scott. Uh, you also talk about uh, Coach Allen Wilson. Yeah, who meant a little something in your life yeah, too, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he meant a big deal in my life. He showed me uh, a lot of great things that I still carry today, you know, as far as uh, understanding why you do what you do and having a love for it. Because if you don't have a love for it, there's no need in doing it That's now, from the start. Now this throwing, he didn't get that, though. No, right? I didn't get that from him. <laughs> <laughs> That's just something I picked up along the way. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, he meant a lot not only to me, but several of my teammates over the past year and even the guys he coached in Paris. Yeah, it's uh, all right, I tell you, let's, uh, let's take a moment to recognize the 12 and again, uh, Rickland and the uh, Lions play uh, Lancaster on uh, Saturday night at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium in the third and final game of the Trinity Mother Francis Kickoff Classic, uh, which begins Thursday with White House and Chapel Hill and Friday night Robert E. Lee uh, to play Lufkin. The uh, 12 players, the 12 men and women who are on this first class, Earl Campbell, for obvious reasons, got to have Earl, but in alphabetical order, Mike Carter, who was a great baseball player, John Titer in the 1960s, uh, passed away. The baseball stadium is named after him. Clifford Gregory was the team captain of Tyler High School's 1930 team. Billy Hall held every job I guess you can have in the TISD. He, was, he, he played for <coughs> Tyler High School. He was a principal, a coach, and an athletic director and a big part of what TISD is all about. Daniel Hernandez, maybe the greatest soccer player to come out of the uh, Tyler Independent School District, also a kicker for John Tyler, and uh, has had a long professional soccer career. Uh, kicked in college at SMU, Charles Milstead, part of a uh, Tyler High School State's finalist team in the uh, mid-1950s. Uh, Christy Porter, who was a volleyball All-American and played at UCLA. Uh, Aaron Ross, maybe the most decorated football player ever from the city of Tyler. National Championship in Texas, two Super Bowls with the New York Giants and still an active NFL player. Robert Taylor, uh, who was uh, an Emmett Scott 1968 uh, honoree. He was the Olympic uh, gold medalist in the 4x100 meter in the 72 Munich Olympics and won silver in the 100-meter uh, dash. Uh, the uh, uh, Dana Reed Westbrook, uh, Robert E. Lee, 1987, All-State basketball player. The uh, uh, Lady Raiders got to the state finals. Stephen F. Austin uh, coaches at Douglas High School. Alan Wilson led JT to the 1994 undefeated state championship and, of course, the guy who brought Cujo into the uh, East Texas lexicon, all that during the Alan Wilson era. And this is the 40th anniversary of the 1973 John Tyler State Championship football team. Uh, Earl was a part of that club, but there are many other great players, including Ronnie Lee, who I'll bet you uh, is probably a part of next year's class, but uh, honoring the entire 1973 John Tyler team this year uh, on this 40th anniversary of that great team. And again, they'll be honored on September 13th at halftime of the Lee JT game. For Coach Holmes, I'm Bill Coates, thanks for joining us.